We open with our old friends, humans in hard hats. They're carrying some kind of experimental super fuel with the Autobots as escorts. The fear is that the Decepticons will attack, once again emphasizing that technology in 1980s America often surpasses that of this ancient race of sentient robots. Unsurprisingly, the Decepticons do attack. And for the first time, since the entire premise of the episode calls for it, we see the tactical advantages the Autobots have on the ground against the Decepticons, who are mostly planes. I get what they're trying to do here, but it feels like too little too late to me. The reason the Decepticons keep losing is because their plans are needlessly complex, not because they can't drive. But I'll buy into the premise, only because I know something cool is coming. Yes, for once, Megatron has a not terrible plan. He decides to build a proper team of Decepticon cars, not mindless drones, but actual robots with actual brains. Better late than never. So he and his guys set out to have a little fun doing what it took the rest of us 15 years to appreciate in video game form. They steal some cars. Among the cars stolen is this sports car involved in a bank robbery. Ah, I'll go straight! I'll do anything! Take the money! I just want to go! Thankfully, the guy survived because he was wearing a... Well, you know. While he snatches what will inevitably become the evil version of Optimus Prime, Rumble takes out a couple of cop cars. This must raise his wanted level to at least three stars, but he's such a badass that he just keeps on trucking. Next we get a montage. But unlike the usual boring, stupid montages about, I don't know, knitting socks or whatever, this is an awesome robot building montage. I could watch this for hours. Hell, over the years I probably have. Then Megatron takes his new team out for a test drive. They all perform admirably and everything's super cool until Megatron decides to name them... The Stunticons. Ugh, really? I knew we couldn't keep this level of awesomeness up. Meanwhile, the Autobots, blah, 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 yeah, who cares? Okay, here's where things get back on track toward Awesome Town. To give his new cars actual personalities, Megatron has to head back to Cybertron and show us a bunch of cool backstory stuff we've never seen before. Remember when I said you don't need female Transformers to procreate? It's true. We're about to find out how it actually goes now. I have plotted a course to Vector Sigma. Vector Sigma? Yes! The mega computer deep in the core of Cybertron, which gave us all life. Meanwhile, oh, these guys again. Yeah, I guess they're following or whatever. Who cares? Back to the characters we care about. Megatron beats up an old man and steals the key to Vector Sigma, as seen in the title of this very episode. Oh, man, I guess we have to follow the Autobots now. Lame. Actually, though, we're still on Cybertron. No humans to be seen anywhere. And lots of ancient robot traps and secret tunnels and stuff. I love this crap. I mean, look at these Centurions guarding Vector Sigma. That's what a fucking robot looks like, man. As they swarm over him and fuck his guys up, Megatron realizes that the key to Vector Sigma, as seen in the title of this very episode, makes them his slaves. Man, I want robot slaves. Sensibly, for a change, Megatron sends these indestructible dudes after the Autobots, which is a little out of character. Typically, he'd build a machine to take control of something stupid, exhausting a ton of resources and ultimately obscuring his actual goal. But here he does just what any sensible evil prick would do. Maybe he's finally learning. Yeah, probably not. Meanwhile, the Autobots are wandering through the tunnels, talking about adventures that they apparently had off-camera. I'd be fine if all the Autobots' adventures were off-camera, honestly. But if they're going to talk about it, shouldn't we, you know, see it? On the way, they see some disused shuttles in an old hangar. But there's no time for that. Onward to certain doom, Autobots. This can't be the way those deceptive goons came. On the contrary, it definitely is. What makes you so sure? Because who else would have sent them to kill us? I kind of like Alpha Trion's bleak sense of humor. Oh, by the way, we're all going to die. Back in the Vector Sigma chamber, Megatron prepares the Stunticons. And we see the thing for the first time. Apparently Vector Sigma is a scale model of Epcot Center. Hey, we had different ideas about what was cool in the 80s, all right? Rumble isn't impressed either, if it makes you feel any better. So Megatron puts in the key and wakes up their father. Or, God. Mainframe? I'm not sure what the appropriate title is here. Anyway, Megatron wakes him up, and five new Decepticons are born. Robot I am Ultra Master! I swear loyalty to you! I am Dead End. I guess I'll have to do what you say. I'm... I'm Breakdown. I'll obey, too. I am drag strip. I live to obey. I want a rider. I want to bust something up. The funny thing is, if you've seen the episodes that follow, you realize how much crap this loyalty and obedience thing is. These guys are the most disobedient, practically rebellious Decepticons on the team this side of Starscream. That means either Vector Sigma is faulty, which therefore makes all Transformers the conscious equivalent of Windows Vista, 
or he has a cruel sense of humor and doesn't exactly do what he's asked to do. I think I prefer that explanation. The idea of God always works better for me if he's kind of a jerk. Of course, this whole Victor Sigma thing opens up a ton of questions. Are the Dinobots really alive since they were just created on Earth without Vector Sigma? What's to stop Megatron coming back with about 10,000 more empty Decepticon bodies to be given personalities? Okay, that's just two questions. But each of them weighs half a ton. Shut up. Anyway, so Megatron gets his car, guys, and heads back to Earth. Meanwhile, the Autobots double back to the hangar and revive a bunch of Transformer corpses to serve as an army of the living dead to defend them from the Centurions. I love this show. We end with the Stunticons on Earth, fucking stuff up, and a looming threat that humans think it's the Autobots doing the damage. Sadly, I've watched ahead, and I know this particular thread goes nowhere. However, there's some really cool stuff coming up in Part 2. Do you have any idea how hard these reviews are when I actually liked the episode? And now it's time for this week's science lesson. It may seem like the Stunticons defy the basic laws of physics, but look at it like this. <coughs> Makes total sense now, doesn't it?